Chairman, I'd like to read an opening statement. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to commend you uh, for the commitment of uh, getting to view all these bills and frankly for doing it on a bipartisan basis. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you promised to work together on the committee and I do respect that you fulfilled that promise, so thank you for that. You're going to be recognized for a longer statement if you keep it that. <laughs> <laughs> Just, all right. Uh, today I have two bills on the agenda, the Women's Veterans Access to Quality Care Act and the Care for Veterans Dependents Act. And I'm proud to have worked on both of these bipartisan bills with Senator Murray and appreciate the input that the VA and the Veterans Service Organizations have provided. While the VA has come a long way in improving its care to women's veterans, there's still some gaps that need to be filled, and I think our bill will do that. The VA needs to improve access to doctors that can meet their gender-specific health needs um, and ensure their policies on safety and privacy for women veterans are properly carried out in all VA facilities. I appreciate the VA's willingness to work with us on this issue and look forward to finding a path forward for this particular bill. Another bill Senator Murray and I have worked on for years is the Care for Veterans Dependents Act. The concept is quite simple. If you are a homeless facility that receives VA funding, you want to ensure that you can get reimbursed for providing care to dependents who accompany a veteran. We do not want to see veterans getting turned away from any facility just because they have dependents with them. With over 700 homeless veterans still living on the streets and shelters in Las Vegas and other parts of Nevada, we must continue working to address the needs of veterans who have fallen on hard times. I'm also proud to support a bill in today's agenda from Senator Hatch that ensures that veterans have access to adult daycare, day, uh, day health care benefits. Lastly, I want to thank Chairman Isaacson and Ranking Member Tester for their work in coming to an agreement on an accountability bill that has support from both sides of the aisle. It's so important that we give the VA the tools that they need to get rid of bad employees, and anyone who has wronged a veteran should not get to stay on administrative leave for months on end. That has to stop, and the VA needs to have the authority to get rid of these individuals. With that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of questions uh, and comments for uh, Dr. Lee. Um, I guess the first question, this is a question I wanted to raise with uh, Secretary Shulkin, um, and I will the next time he's here, but are, have you heard of Ely, Nevada? I know there was an, uh, a gathering there recently, but I have not, I have not personally uh, been there. I don't expect you to have been there. I just want to make sure you've heard of Ely, Nevada. Um, we have veterans there that uh, were able to get their care from a local hospital instead of having to drive uh, to Salt Lake City, which is several hundred miles away. Uh, the choice out in Ely and, and other rural um, small towns in Nevada is you either have to drive to Reno, uh, which is 300 miles one way, or you have to drive to Salt Lake, which is 300 miles the other way. Uh, but that contract uh, that they had with the local hospital expired, uh, and uh, frankly, they don't want to use the choice program, and I understand why. One veteran called to schedule an appointment with the contractor for choice, and he was told that Ely, Nevada did not exist. Um, another veteran called to schedule an appointment with the contractor for choice and was told, um, actually he was a week out from an appointment and still hadn't been told whether the appointment had been authorized. Service through the choice program isn't good and Ely veterans don't want to be part of it. And the VA shared good news last week uh, when veterans, uh, that veterans would be able to access the local hospitals through September without having to use the choice program which was good news, but obviously these veterans want a permanent uh, solution. And, and I'll be asking the same questions to the uh, secretary about what uh, permanent solutions they may have for these Ely veterans, uh, but I do have a couple of questions for you. And the first question is, what are you doing to hold the contractors accountable uh, for their performances? Uh, Senator, we, uh, we definitely need a better solution for those veterans uh, in your home state and Ely. Uh, we know there are a lot of issues with the program. We're working on them. Um, I can get back to you with specifics on that in, in that particular area, what we're doing. Uh, but it also speaks to the larger need to look at the entire program and evolve it to better meet the needs of veterans. What would be a time frame that you could get back to me on this? Uh, as, 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 soon as, we, uh, as soon as I possibly can, sir. A couple weeks, a month? I just want to get some kind of a timeline. Like I said, they were extended through September, which was good news. I just want to make sure we're not 
uh, talking in October. I think we can get get you some response back within a few Prior weeks on what we're, yes. Okay, okay. We'll put a priority uh, on it. I understand you have a pilot program that allows VAs to schedule uh, appointments for veterans in choice programs. Um, tell me a little bit about this pilot program and has it been successful? Uh, are you referring to a self, the self-scheduling? Um, it's a pilot program from what, what I understand that allow the VA to schedule appointments for veterans in the choice program. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, I, sir, I'd have to take that um, for the record and just get some specifics back uh, okay. back to you. We can broaden those questions. Um, can you tell me why you think uh, veterans uh, currently dislike um, the CHOICE program? Why do you think they dislike it? We want to, uh, I think we want, we strive to make uh, access to care very uh, convenient um, and centered around the veterans' needs. And I think some of the issues with the CHOICE program currently are well known um, and uh, have to do with the uh, um, cumbersome uh, process to get to that care in the community. Can I, uh, can I share a couple stories with you? We have a veteran from Battle Mountain who's fighting cancer, needs surgery. Um, but the day before the surgery, it was still not authorized. Have you heard stories like this before? Unfortunately. We have another veteran in Reno who had an who had an authorization for surgery that was later revoked by the VA, leaving him with a seventeen thousand dollar bill. Have you heard stories like this before, Senator? That is unacceptable. Is this unique, or is it uh, something you've heard before? Uh, again, I think the problems with the program are are um, well documented. Uh, I don't know about the exact, uh, the, the volume or the numbers of those particular kinds of cases, but uh, it's absolutely not, not the kind of service that we strive for. So tell me what it's going to take. Tell me what it's going to take to change problems like this in the system. So we have made a lot of progress um, already. Uh, my uh, uh, colleague, Dr. Yahia in particular, has uh, spent a lot of uh, time and energy reforming uh, the the choice, choice program through a number of contract modifications and uh, changes and other changes. I think that we would just ask if we could work together to continue that process uh, as we think about uh, how that program should evolve to better meet veterans' needs. Mr. Chairman, my time's run out. I want to thank you and commend you on your questions. And for the record, for you and everybody's benefit here, and Senator Tester is aware of this, Secretary Shulkin and the VA have been working with some time to recognize they have problems like the ones you've outlined in terms of Ely, Nevada, in terms of surgery being revoked and things of that nature. And as we speak, we have been working with uh, Secretary Shulkin to come forward with the new parameters to try and deal with these glitches so it doesn't happen again. And this committee will be dealing with it in the not too distant future. So as we modernize the CHOICE program, it is truly a choice. It is timely in its responsiveness. It is not as cumbersome and difficult as it has been for the veterans. And I'm, Dr. Shulkin has been invaluable in his, and, and what's, what's his name, Dr. Bali? By Dr. Bali? Dr. Bali, the chairman's violating his own rule here. He's calling you now. Dr. Bali has done invaluable work with us in making this happen, so we're gonna to continue to work for it and bring it to the committee to ensure it's corrected because many of those things are basically inexcusable. We need to make it work good for our veterans and for the Veterans Administration. So thank you for bringing it up. Mr. Chairman, thanks for your attention also. You're best.